Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. And I like to start off by letting you all know that this will not be a product-based live this morning, but this will be one that will be dedicated to the wives this morning. Um, so I just, you know, sometimes I think I have to um, teach certain things when I hear certain things. So the name of this live is We Are Help Mates, Not Help Maids, okay? The reason I'm talking about this is because sometimes I don't think we understand our role when, when we were created to be mates with men we were created for a certain purpose. And the number one priority when we were created as women, the number one priority was to be a help mate, not help mate. So a lot of times when I'm talking to women and I'm asking, you know, what is it that you bring to the table? What is it that you can, you know, when you're saying that you want to be a wife, when you're saying that you are ready for this great big role of marriage, what are you bringing? And most times, and, and I kid you not, most times when I'm talking to my younger ladies, the first thing that they talk about is domestic chores. When I hear young ladies talk about domestic chores, that lets me know that more than likely they were raised on survival and not raised on love. It's a difference. And, and a lot of times it was a situation to where our parents couldn't necessarily help the circumstances. See, it's a big difference in being raised on survival versus raised on love. So when I'm asking the question about what you can bring, a lot of times I'm not looking for you to say what duties you can perform. What I'm looking for you to say is that I can actually be the woman in this man's life to motivate and encourage him and inspire him to be the best version of himself because that is what our men need from us more than anything, okay? They need a kind word. They need some encouragement. They need to be affirmed. Way before they need anything else, meaning that we up here in their mind. If you ever talk to men, a lot of times they can tell you all the different things that their wife do for them as far as domestic duties, but a lot of times, the communication is not there. And that's what they need us for. They need us to be that person that they can communicate with and the person that pours into them. See, we are pourers, meaning we pour into the people around us. But our husbands are the number one priority. That's who we pour into first, okay? So, you know, when I'm talking... Men don't necessarily need us to be servants. They don't need us to, to you know, be, be married maids. Of course, you know, we want to keep our space clean. We want to make sure that we provide nutrition. But all of those things are secondary. The parenting is secondary. All of those things that we list, that we do, most women, all of those things are really secondary. The number one priority is to be the helpmate and to be the person that inspires and encour encourages him to be the best version of himself. That's what we were created for. But that has been lost. That has been lost. Because the people that raised us. They were workers. They weren't able to be in the home. To be able to inspire and encourage. And then do all of these different things. Because they were out and about making a living. So by the time they get home. They exhausted. And the last thing they want to do is talk. Because these people at the job. Then ran them crazy. And they, they just need some time to themselves, and they don't want to talk about nothing. They don't want to talk to no husband. They don't want to talk to no children. They don't want to talk to nobody. They just want to be and exist. That's it. So 
so when you see that, a lot of times that is not an environment for nurturing and encouraging and lifting and elevating and loving. And that's just the truth. See, the reason I advocate so much for wife school is because what the wisdom that God has given me, he's shown me where we've erred and, and, and went in different directions. A lot of us, especially as black women, we don't know nobody that went to finishing school. We don't. A lot of us have never even heard of finishing school. When I, when I go and I do these tours at the different plantations, Cause that's my that's my my hobby. That's what I enjoy doing on my my free time. I love going to antebellum plantations, meaning before slavery ended. And the reason why I like going is because I like to learn about the the time period, the culture, and the way of life. And if you ever visit these uh, plantations, they normally tell you about the families that live in the homes. And a lot of times the homes have been owned by several different families. So they give you the history to all of the families. And one thing that I picked up on was most families were wealthy and they sent their daughters to finishing school. Do you think when these people were finishing school that they were learning how to do all this cooking and clean? No, they had people that they had people that worked and did all that, which is fine. But they had people that worked the dead out there. You know what they was learning in finishing school? They was learning how to finesse. That's what they was learning in finishing school. They were learning how to cater to, how to be the support, learning the right things and the right words and how to stroke a man's ego. They went to finishing school to learn how to finish a man. Meaning... You don't see a lot. And, and the thing is that that knowledge has been passed down in, in those families, right? But ain't nobody done passed that knowledge down to us because all we'd have never been taught what our people did was work, serve, clean, cook. This, so they taught us what they knew. But they didn't teach us how to finesse because they didn't go to finishing school. But see, when you come to wife school, with me, I'm teaching you all of that. And that's where we fall short because we are the last ones to marry. Talking about black women. We, we're not marrying at a rate that other people are marrying. Our, our marriage rates have increased recently within the last uh, census that they did within the last 10 years. Our marriage rates have increased because of because we 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 learning, we we educating ourselves, we understanding the importance of partnering together, and we understanding that this whole independent thing that that have been pushed on us, we understand that that's a bunch of bullshit, and it don't do nothing but lead us to a bunch of stress and being baby mamas, and not having help and not having support and all of this kind of stuff. And let me tell you something: this message ain't gonna be for everybody. Everybody not gonna be receptive to this. But them the same people that's by themselves struggling, independent, raising children on their own. And, and, and they want to holler about they're proud about it. But at the same time, when them kids get to be a certain age, they on their same page saying, I need mentors and I need help and I, I need the village. Yeah, these same people said, I need the village. I need mentors. I need help. I need this. But those other people, they are teaching their children generation after generation after generation the importance of finessing. See, when, when I get to talking about hiring help, a lot of times, the, a lot of when black women go and hire help, meaning hire maid service, hire uh, different people to come in and do services, chefs, cooks, and all of this kind of stuff to free us up so that we can have time to be with our spouses. We can look down upon them. We can, they get to saying, oh, they think they better. They think they more. They think they this and they think they that. But no. Sometimes we need to hire your help because our husband is the priority. Being available to him is the priority. But a lot of us, we so caught up into being the priority to our children, to our husband gets neglected and then our husband go talk to the work wife. Oh, this is about to get real good. Oh, this, oh, this is about to get real good. Oh, oh, it's about to get real good. Hold on. They go talk to the work wife. 
or they go solicit other people outside of the home just to be able to have conversations with. Your husband have different things that's going on at his job, different projects that he's on, different responsibilities that have been added to him and you know nothing about it because you don't have the conversation. Because somebody else then took on that job to have the conversation. Oh, this is about to get real good. See, the thing is, if you if you look at psych psychologists will tell you there's something about a woman's voice in itself. They've done studies on this stuff. It's something about our voice, just our voice that soothes a man. When football players out there and they running that ball, yeah, they got male cheerleaders, but who are you here screaming? You hear the women screaming. You hear the female cheerleaders telling them, go team, go touchdown. Let's get it. Because the psychologists have already done the, st the studies to show that just us chanting and encouraging and being their cheerleader motivates them and encourages them. When the football player's playing, when everybody cheering, it's women that you hear cheering. It, it's not other men. You, of course you hear the fans and all of that, but it's the women that's saying, go team, go. So when our men come home, we got to be that cheerleader. We got to be that person that encourages them. We got to be that person that motivates them. Because let me tell you something. A man that is motivated, a man that's getting affirmed, a man that's, that's somebody literally elevating them and edifying them, they get out there and they feel like they can conquer the world. Baby, they will go out there and get it for you. You wonder how you see these women on, uh, on the page and they pulling up and uh, they got home from work and here go a damn brand new car sitting in the driveway. What you think that come from? Because she doing her job. She doing what she's supposed to do. And she's making him happy. So therefore he does things to make her happy. But see, when we have this whole mentality of me, 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 my, 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 independent, to hell with a nigga, F a nigga, da, 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 da. No, that ain't getting us nowhere. And I, and, and I personally, me personally, I hate this whole city girl culture. I just, I can't stand it because I know it ain't going to get us nowhere. And I know these same people going to be older, alone, not having nobody. I had a wonderful weekend this weekend. And I told my husband so many times this weekend, I was like, I just really enjoy spending time with you. I just really enjoy your company. I really enjoy our conversations. Those are the type of things that I enjoy. And it don't cost nothing. It's just time. Will we get to pour and encourage, you know, pour into each other and encourage each other? I was playing this game, and I and um, it, it's a date night game that I have. But one of the things it, it asked my husband, the card that he pulled, you know, what a, what's one of the qualities that he that he likes about me? And it said a positive trait, a positive quality. And one thing that he brought to my attention, you know, because he's telling me what he sees. He says. I love the way you have the ability to inspire. He was like, you always encouraging, you always positive, you always inspiring, not only me, but anybody that you come in contact with. But the thing is, that is a feminine trait. See, you don't want to talk to somebody that's always when you're giving them an idea. A man don't want to talk to a woman every time he gives an idea, she talks about, oh, that ain't going to work. Well, why do you want to do it like this? Well, I think you ought to do it like that because this here, that, that, the other. No, sometimes we just have to listen. And sometimes you have to just let people be and let them do it that way. And if it doesn't work, then it just doesn't work. But what you're supposed to do is encourage and inspire. And if anything, add to it. But don't necessarily shut the whole idea down. See, that's what those women were learning in finishing school. See, us, we so worried about it not working to the point where we won't even allow people to dream. Because our grandmothers was out there working and struggling to the point where they were so fearful of something not working. I'm just telling you the difference. And see, when you come to wife school, you learn how to inspire. You learn how to finesse. You learn how to affirm. Those are the things that you learn. A lot of people say, well, what I'm investing in that for? I already know how to cook our baby cooking and cleaning. We don't talk about that at all. That is not, baby, we so far away from cooking and cleaning. 
I do that on my downtime on my wife page because that is the one thing that I don't talk about in wife school. So I can give you that for free. I, I can give you recipes. I can give you table setups. I can give you all of that to keep you going throughout, but that is not what the course is about at all. So I'm saying all that to say, if you are not being his cheerleader, if you are not encouraging him and getting in his mind and letting him know on a daily basis how great he is and how thankful you are to have him in your life, you need to start. See, I put that out there last month to do the whole, to do the love letter challenge, the old school love letter challenge. A lot of y'all took that shit for granted. Y'all didn't even do it. To the point where I had husbands contacting me saying the shit I had them look, watch the YouTube. And I did the damn letter. Waiting on her to give me her letter. And she ain't never gave me no letter. So a lot of times it's the small things that you take for granted. And the thing is, I gave you something that didn't require nothing but your time. It don't require nothing but your thoughts and your time, pen, and paper. Something that we all have available. And you still didn't do it. So I'm saying all that to say, you don't even understand how your words can move a man. Do you know one of the things that those women were being taught in finishing school is how to write love letters? How to be able to woo a man? But all you want to do is throw your fucking legs open and offer some pussy. But what you don't understand is that's the one thing that we all got. That's the one thing that we all got. So what makes you different? I'm trying to show you how to be different. I'm trying to show you how to get in that head. Because see, all this other stuff sexual, I can teach you that. I can teach you that all day long. I done taught that for years. I done did fun parties. I'm actually about to start teaching women how to do fun parties. So I can teach you that. That's techniques. I can teach you that. But it's a whole nother level when you get in a man's head. When, when he at work and he out there thinking about you. When he want to give up, he thinking about you. He out there putting forth his best foot. Why? Because he's thinking about you and the kids and, and trying to make our life better. That's the kind of man you want. But, but you know how you get that kind of man? You create that kind of man. You create him. See, let me tell you something. A man is only as good as the woman he got on his side. When we go to the party with him, baby, we make him better. He look good because he walking with us. In other words, we elevate him. We make him better. What I look like going out in the public with a damn bonnet on walking next to my man? How the hell you think that make him look? To hell with how it make me look. We already know it make me look like a damn fool out in public. But how it make him look? A man want a woman on his arm that makes him better. So y'all go ahead and keep on walking around with them bonnets and shit on like y'all the maid. Like y'all ain't your mama. Like y'all about to get ready to go clean some toilets and some shit. Or you about to go do some strenuous hard work. Oh, no. When I walk on the side of mine, this is what's walking on the side of him. Something that he could be proud of. See, the numbers just went down. The numbers on Facebook just went down. They logged off. They say this bitch talking about bonnets. Here she go. But y'all will be all right. Y'all will be all right. So, again, we are not called to be the mates. We are called to be the help mates. And the help mates is the ones that encourage and, and we elevate and let this man know what it is that he do for us and bring to the table. Now, some of y'all on here saying, Sharonda, I'm not doing all that. He don't deserve that. Well, baby, I pity you for picking him. That's on you. You picked him. So you picked him. You married him. Now mold him. Make him better. You heard what Betty Wright said? She was earning her man and learning her man. You earn him and learn him. Mold him into what you need him to be. Make him better. That's your job. You picked him. You married him. That's your husband. Make him better. See, a lot of times people say, well, she always talking about the women. She always talking about the women. Baby, my audience is women. So God ain't told me to go make no men be better people. He told me to deal with my group of people, my audience, the women. So all I talk about is us being better. I ain't never told you to go do nothing to change no man. I have always encouraged you to do things to change yourself. 
to be better for him. I ain't never told you to go do nothing to change him. Because what you're going to learn is you can't change other people. The only thing you can do is make yourself better. And because you become better, the people around you become better. That's how they go. When you become better, the people around you become better. Okay? All right. So that's going to end my live for today. If you're on my regular sex talk page, I have posted up some information about the vagina, how it is self-cleaning, how sometimes if you like me, I love black underclothes. But if you have black underclothes, make sure you put your liner on. Because if you don't put your liner on, when you wash your clothes, you're going to see that little white stuff in the middle of the seat of it where your, your, your vagina then bleached your panties. I want you to understand that that bleaching is completely normal. That's because we have acidic, uh, our, our pH balance is, is so acidic, but it's like that because our vagina cleanses itself. So that lets you know that you ain't really got to do too much to it. Because if some shit coming out you that can bleach your panties, that, that lets you know that it's cleaning it good. Okay? All right. So you all be blessed. You all enjoy your Monday. And make sure you shop at Rhythm Boutique. Yes, honey. This whole little attire. Let me slide it this way. This whole little tire that ain't she got on today. Yeah, baby. All this, it came from Rhythm. Go down there to Rhythm Boutique on Florida Boulevard. Go see them. All right, y'all. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Let me call my husband back and see what's going on. Because he just called me, y'all. All right. Bye-bye.